Here is the World on Water's 35th America's Cup report. Now, obviously, we've sustained uh, quite a bit of damage, but I think, you know, the firstly and the most important thing for us is that all the guys on board are safe and with no major injuries. So uh, it's definitely a relief when you're seeing a few of them falling off that you can, uh, you know, see them, your heads above water and that they're all fine. And, uh, yeah, right now the guys are obviously taking the boat out and assessing the damage, which we have quite a bit. But, um, yeah, we feel like we'll be able to repair it and get back into action. Now, obviously, the wind limit, uh, the winds were at the upper limit today, but that was definitely, uh, yeah, pretty close to the upper limits, but um, that's all part of it. And then, yeah, in, in that second race, we um, obviously got, yeah, just as we went to accelerate, um, got really high and then proceeded into a, a big bow down trim. But now for ourselves, we'll have to go over and review the footage. We're not quite sure, you know, what caused it yet, but. Now we'll, get, we'll review it soon. managed to go around behind them. SAP coming into the mix behind them. Oman Air now jiving over. Red Bull getting very close as well. This is the team that have come out of the blocks firing. On behalf of uh, Yacht Club Costa Smeralda, welcome uh, at the uh, 10th edition of the Loro Piana Super Yacht Regatta. The program this week is actually called for coastal races across the board, and what better place to do it than Porto Cervo? A lot of great, great sailors here. It should be a terrific week of race. Comunque siamo ribelli. <laughs> yeah, Come ribelli. ribelli dobbiamo vincere. <laughs> Boats are very close racing, so I think it's a challenge every day and I hope they're enjoying it as much as we do. I've got a bit tangled up with open season, which cost us some time. That's always going to happen when it's that close. Yeah, it's a very challenging place to sail at, especially today inside the channel with all the tricks, so all the team enjoys it, so that's why we are coming back. prove that actually it was not just the rules but uh, the performance of the crew and uh, that's what we proved today. Performing better from day to day because as we drink champagne the weight of the, of the boat gets lighter. To sail the boat as hard as possible with other boats going through this area, you know, I couldn't think of anywhere else better to do it. What a 
Cherbo is just the nicest place I think that exists to sail it. It really is special and uh, for us the Laurel Pianas are friends so we're delighted to win their regatta for them. The Laurel Piana Prize, the Silver Jubilee Cup, the prize goes to Saudade. I'm extremely happy, it was just a dream to do this. But we came and made it. Next year come back and uh, have to defend it and sail against PG. I, he, he is already very keen <laughs> to beat us. Three weeks ago, we could not sail like that. We improve uh, every day uh, when we go sailing and when we go racing. That's a good uh, image for everybody. This is good for the future because we want to go forward. It's uh, like an addiction when uh, you... <laughs> You, uh, you try the America's Cup and uh, for sure we are all competitors and we want to improve and we want to, to win the race, it's, uh, it's our motivation. Uh, fantastic day of racing again on uh, Carlisle Bay. Uh, unfortunately I got one race in, got a little bit windy, but it was uh, a terrific place to sail. Beers cold, uh, really enjoying it over here, so um, uh, yeah, looking forward to some more uh, racing tomorrow. The beer is cold, the sail is good, and it's nice and windy. Fantastic. I would like to say this is a fantastic venue. This is the first time I'm selling film as it was a thalassotherapy. Hot water. This time you have a problem, you put your back in the water and you feel good. The first time I'm selling with flying fishes. There are flying fishes taking off in front of me. That is very nice. The beer is fine, the sun is fine, fish is white. This is absolutely terrible. Where will we find that again next time? It's impossible to conceive. La bière est fraîche, mais l'eau est chaude.
the last time we raced the Brazilians was in an exciting medal race where there's four boats going for the gold medal. The Brazilians came out on top from a really close finish of two seconds. Nah, I just, this is one of the days I just want to go back home and not think too much about the day and just make it better for tomorrow. But, but you know, in the end of the week, it's what matters. So I'm, I don't know, just try to focus and try to make it better. I'm sure he'll uh, come out swinging. We like these conditions, the guys are really pumped up for the race. If we can put it all together, then we know we can beat them. Great day to, to start the semi-finals. The first playoff semi-final pitched Emirates Team New Zealand against Land Rover BAR. It's the best of nine races and expectations were high. Not much in it at the start. The Kiwis were building a lead by leg three. But there were issues on the British boat. The engineers did their best, but the damage to the wing meant a return to the dock and a forfeit of both the day's races. We had, have blanked and flagged the TBR and awarded the race to the Emirates Team New Zealand. Oh, suppose we're done. The team say they will be back for the next day's racing. Clean start for the first race of the other semi-final, Artemis Racing up against SoftBank Team Japan. The Swedes were fast and error-free. But by leg three, Japan pounced and went ahead. A lead they held to the end. When the two met again, Artemis claimed a penalty. Not so, said the umpires, and Japan were off to a flyer. But leg four saw Japan slip up. And Artemis took advantage to square the semi-final. Uh, fantastic day of racing again on uh, Carlisle Bay. Uh, unfortunately, I only got one race in, got a little bit windy, but it was uh, a terrific place to sail. Beers cold, uh, really enjoying it over here, so um, uh, yeah, looking forward to some more uh, racing tomorrow. The beer is cold, the sailing is good, and it's nice and windy. Fantastic. I'd like to say this is a fantastic venue. This is the first time I'm selling film as it was a thalassotherapy, not water. This time you have a problem, you put your back in the water and you feel good. The first time I'm selling with flying fishes. There are flying fishes taking off in front of me. That is very nice. The beer is fine, the sun is fine, beach is white. This is absolutely terrible. Where will we find that again next time? It's impossible to conceive. La bière est fraîche, mais l'eau est chaude. A uh, bit of a roller coaster ride for us here at Emirates Team New Zealand today. Um, you know, a, a little bit of a, a wing failure um, just before we headed out for race one today. Uh, we've damaged uh, our bottom flap, as probably most people can see, but now the guys are working super hard. We've got about um, 40 minutes now before the start of our first race, so you know, we'll be touching out for that one, but we'll definitely be back out there for the second uh, regardless. So, you know, we're working hard to try and get back out there for that first race. Yeah. 
Wing two back in. Uh, time was probably maybe 45 minutes. Um, I'm in a fluster, but we're out on the course now. I'd love to see us win this. 43 knots. Emirates Team New Zealand in behind them. So the race very much on right now. The Kiwis have taken the lead into the final gate, and the New Zealanders are tearing across the water towards victory, towards a 3-0 advantage. Absolutely amazing effort by the short team to get us out there. Um, we battled away, um, got ourselves uh, organised, managed to sail well around the track and, um, and come away with a, a point there, which was a, a huge turnaround from the uh, turn of events uh, we had early in the mornings. I'm sailing in pretty sort of marginal top-end conditions for these boats. Um, you know, we had a uh, quite a, a catastrophic capsize and uh, you know sustained quite a lot of damage to the yacht. The Kiwis, oh, they're taking a terrible nose down. Okay, oh, goodness me, men overboard. Crisis time for New Zealand. Uh, all the guys here are, are digging deep. Um, the team is uh, all pulling together. We'll very much get the boat back together again and um, be out to uh, fight another day. So. Started the day with a two-point lead and effectively finished the day again with a two-point lead. So nothing really changes there. More racing to come. Uh, all the boys are, are, are physically okay. A few little bumps and scratches and bruises, but um, very pleasing. No injuries today. <laughs> um, obviously, a disappointing way to end the day, but um, I mean, everybody's just keen to get in, stuck in, and get it fixed, you know. But but we're racing tomorrow at this point. They're digging deep as we always knew they were going to at a time like this. And, and it's what they've trained for, for their for their careers. You know, they you know, under the leadership of uh, Sean, they're um, they're really just just digging it in as you'd expect them to. They're doing an amazing job. First person tonight I'd like to introduce you to is Wendy Tuck. Uh, now Wendy was a skipper of Darnang Vietnam in the last edition of the Clip Around the World Race and she's preparing for the next. Um, she's also a sailor in 10 Sydney Hobarts and has been a sailing instructor and a chartered boat skipper for the last 15 years. During the last clipper race in the North Pacific, she suffered a knockdown in the huge seas and will be focusing her talk on that experience and what she learned for the night. One of the big highlights was she won this, that big division in last year's Hobart. So, very well done, Wendy. So, with no further ado, Wendy Tuck. Okay, thank you for having me here. Um, I'll just give you just first a quick story of what the Clipper is, not a marketing campaign or anything, but just so you have an idea of where I've come from and how we got to what happened in North Pacific. So Clipper has 12 identical yachts. We race around the world every two years and it's a race that consists of eight legs. The worst one for me was down in the North Pacific. Everyone always seems to think the Southern Ocean, which we did do, is the roughest, toughest, but by far the North Pacific is relentless. So my crew is made up of people from all walks of life. I can have people who have sailed or people who have not sailed. Generally, my crew was quite limited on the sailing experience when we first started off. So that first leg from London down to Rio, it was pretty green. I probably had about five people that had sailed. Two were very good sailors, the rest were learners, pretty much. But by the time we came here, did the Hobart, got to the North Pacific, I've got crew who'd never sailed before, have all of a sudden done over 20,000 miles. And a lot of that was pretty hard. The first big wins we got was probably coming out of Cape Town, so leg three. The forecast was nothing more than 45 knots on the nose, which is not pleasant, but not, not undoable. But it soon jumped up to 65, then up to 80. So that sort of took us all a bit by surprise. We had three reefs in the main pretty quickly. It was the first time my crew had seen winds like that. I haven't seen anything quite as big as 80 knots. So with the water of keeping the boat safe, we decided to hope to get down our head sails first. So we run with a cutter rig. So we have a Yankee on the force, a 
and a state sale on the inside on the inner four states. So dropped down that outer sale of the Yankee and then just carried on with our, our state sale. Everything worked a treat. It was all nice and fine because I trained the crew so hard all the way up. I was pretty much the world's biggest nag out to get to that point. So what I did to have our crew prepared for heavy weather stuff, we started from day one. The minute we left from London, it was all what I call nice fluffy sailing. We probably had nothing over 35 knots, definitely nothing more than 30 knots on the nose. It was pretty much reaching downwind the whole way. But I was still pretty, like I say, pretty much anal about how we ran the boat and how the crew acted down below. So one of the important things was always making sure the boat was completely packed and tidy down below. It's a bit hard when you're going through 10 knots of breeze and I'm walking around saying, how come this cupboard's open? How come this isn't put away? How come this knife is sitting on a bench? So that started from day one. So we had that culture, I know I don't like using, but we did have that culture from day one of keeping the boat ready for anything at any time. Very hard sometimes not to get a bit lazy, but that's just how we ran it. One of, one of the other big things that was high on my list of we do not do this ever is just getting your bunk without pulling yourself up on your bunk. We had a pipe cot so you can lock yourself in and putting your lead cloth up. 